Hello parents, how are we doing? Uh, it's another Wednesday night class. Uh, we're coming to you from uh, live from my bedroom. Actually, it's not live. You're getting it recorded. But I'm live, and I'm here right now. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you joined us again. Um, I'm kind of getting to the end of kind of my material. Uh, I know we covered some things last week, uh, some different topics. Uh, tonight, what I want to do is give a big review, especially for, uh, there may be a whole lot of people who, who haven't been listening, who haven't uh, been part of our class. And this is kind of give an overview of what Love and Logic is about. Uh, it'll also give the rest of us a, a really good reminder, uh, especially as we need that time. Um, we're beginning to be with our kids more. Uh, we need to pray for patience. We need to pray to remember what we need to do uh, because spring break is now lasting longer than we needed to. And it may last even, it may last even longer. You may be teaching your kids. Uh, I saw a meme the other day that said, uh, um, now we realize it was not the teacher's fault. It was, it's our kids. Uh, I saw another one that said, um, and just like that, spanking and prayer were allowed back into school. And so, uh, we'll be doing that a little bit at home. But, but really what I hope is more, uh, love and logic at home is allowing you to uh, have better time with your kids, uh, to be able to uh, have more energy at the end of the day. And it'll make these times when it's stressful, when there's a lot going on, when you're cooped up in the house all together, um, it'll make that time for you easier uh, as parents. So let's pray, and then we'll... Um, um, We'll do some review and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about a few more things. Um, so, dear God, uh, we thank you for um, really an opportunity to have some, some different time with our kids. Um, maybe some extended time or maybe a lot of downtime. And God, our kids have lots of energy. Um, and so uh, we pray that uh, that energy doesn't burn ours. That we as parents are able to uh, to redirect some of that. And so give us wisdom. Help us to remember the things we've learned. Uh, some skills uh, to be able to um, to go out in our day. And so in this time of review and, and sharing, we, uh, we, just, uh, we just ask your blessing. We pray that you be with um, those who are dealing with a lot worse things. Uh, through this crisis with uh, people that are sick, people that uh, are lonely, um, and help us be the church and help us to reach out for them. Um, we pray these in your son's name. Amen. So as I was, I was, as I was looking um, at, at some of the things that are going on uh, through the crisis and things people are doing with their kids, I mean, there's some awesome ideas that people are sharing online. Um, people that are doing mosaics. On, on wood fences. Um, neighborhoods are putting uh, bears in windows and kids and parents are driving around town and they're going on bear hunts looking for bears. I've seen some of our members put, put bears in, in, uh, in their windows and they've, they've showed them online. And so do some, do some looking around in, uh, in social media during this time to find some creative things to do with your kids. Uh, there are a lot of other video options too, especially for learning. Uh, the schools are putting out lots of things uh, so our kids can learn and they can learn creatively. Um, and they can learn, you know, through videos and activities. And so there, there are more resources today than probably there, there ever were. Lots of companies are offering their stuff for free uh, during this crisis and during this time. So look at your school's PTO website or, or Facebook page, whatever your school does to, to communicate some of these things to you. Share some of these things with other parents because there are a lot of creative ideas to just do some things with your kids. Uh, you don't have to be so creative and come up with everything. Uh, I saw one that was that was um, put around our neighborhood and, and some teacher did it and, and left a note on the door with some sidewalk chalk and said, here's a top secret uh, project for you to do with your kids. Uh, and it was to... Uh, uh, to, to draw some messages on the sidewalk with the chalk and uh, they were going to come back around and, 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 and check them out and so um, so kids were jumping on that and, and having fun with that and so depending on the age uh, I've seen other people bake cookies uh, with your kids so you're teaching them things and how to cook in the kitchen and then you're delivering those 
kind of remotely with social distancing to people in the in the church um, uh, to, to take care of to take care of them or give them just a special treat. Maybe use your kids to make to take time to make cards. So there's all kinds of creative things to do with your kids during this time that can um, benefit them as far as their education. Um, but can also teach them how to serve and, and to do things for other people. Uh, and, and again, use things that other people are doing. Uh, share your ideas uh, with other people. And, um, and, and that will make this time go uh, a, a little better. And, and, and hopefully give you um, some things to do with your kids. Okay. So to uh, some of our love and logic comments. Yeah, uh, material. Again, if I had a chalkboard on me, I'd, I'd say our goal as parents is we want to raise responsible kids. And we just, we just want to remember that, raise responsible kids. And we do this by teaching them lots of lots of lessons. We want our kids to make mistakes. And Love and Logic talks about making mistakes while the lessons are small. Uh, while the price tag, I'm sorry, of those lessons are small. The lessons could be big, but the price tag being small. I mean, what is it better to, to do to, to find out what happens when, you, uh, when you're reckless on your tricycle versus when you're reckless with a car? Price tag of a skinned knee is a lot better than, than being hurt in a car. Um, uh, ask, ask Abel Kirkpatrick, is it better to learn the lesson about what happens when you chug Dave Wilhite's salsa versus when you're a teenager and you, you, you chug too much of, of, of some other type of beverage and put something else in your body that your body doesn't want. Um, okay, he just <laughs> he just threw up a little and uh, and peed his pants uh, with the salsa. Uh, alcohol poisoning is a lot worse, and so he's learning <laughs> learning that lesson uh, as somebody's young. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look on uh, look on Aaron's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, so we want them to learn those lessons while they're long, young. And I love using the Kirkpatricks and their examples as well as as my kids because. They've got some great ones. Um, so as we do that, there are four steps we talk about to raising responsible kids. And the four steps to responsibility are let our child have a task that they can handle. So whatever it is and whatever is age appropriate. And remember, kids can start learning um, pretty young. Um, by the time your child is, is two years old, they're going to be smarter than your dog ever is going to be. And so you think about the things that your dog can do. I mean, they can come, they can stay, they can fetch, um, they can roll over, they can get a high five. By the time your kid is two, they're going to be smarter than your dog ever will be. So your child should be able to learn some of those things, even at a young age, um, uh, through repetition, uh, through through rewarding behavior, just saying, hey, good job, uh, great, great, I mean, you, you training your kid almost like you're training your dog and I know that sounds really bad but our kids can learn that way and so we give them tasks that they can handle that are age appropriate and then we hope that they blow it and and we've talked about that we hope that's sadist we know that sounds sadistic but we hope that they blow it because they're going to learn a lesson we're glad as a parent that they're going to learn this lesson again while the price tag is small and so when they do blow it, we let empathy and consequences do the teaching. And that's the love and, and logic in love and logic is empathy and consequences. We let empathy soak up the emotion. We come alongside them. And, and empathy sounds like, oh, how sad. We recognize whatever the emotion is with the empathy. That is frustrating. I know that hurts. Man, this really stinks. And and we're... we're uh, well, while inside we're gleeful because they blew it and they're going to learn a lesson, man, it's, it's really sad when things don't go well for our kids. Uh, we understand it because we were kids, and it was sad when we were kids. So we understand that emotion. So we let empathy, and then we let that consequence do the teaching. Whether it was the hot, hot sauce, whether it was uh, the falling down um, because we were doing something we shouldn't have been doing, whether it was crashing the bicycle whether it was getting a bad grade, whether it was not getting an assignment done, whether it was not cleaning your room, and so your room got cleaned with a trash bag and your parents, whatever it is, that's, that's really sad, right? And we let the consequence do the teaching. When the consequence does the teaching, the consequence is the bad guy. And guess what we as parents get to be? Good guys. How awesome is that? 
And how much better is that than, than being the one that yells at him and sends them to a room or spanks them um, or berates them for whatever, whatever reason. So, so we let empathy and consequences do the teaching and then we give them the task again. And, and we repeat it as long as they need to, to learn that lesson. So those are the steps of responsibility. We talked a lot about choices, giving our ch kids choices. And we give our ch kids choices because we're allowing them to share control. So when we talk about choices, it's so that our kid feels like they have control. Because they're making decisions. Now we give them the choices. We give them the options. And so we give them two options that we can live with, two options that they are happy with. Okay, you're going to eat vegetables, but are you going to eat carrots? Or are you going to eat broccoli? Which one's it going to be? All right, they get to decide. We're going to bed, but are you going to go to bed now or are you going to go to bed in five minutes? You're taking your jacket to school, but are you taking your jacket on your back or in your backpack? So those are all things we let them make those decisions and that gives them shared control again if they don't choose you do i wanted my kids to have to get clean they could take a bath or they could take a shower when when they didn't choose i chose one and guess which one i chose the one that they didn't want uh, and in that case it was the shower bath or shower oh i don't know i don't know okay shower no no i want that oh how sad I'm sorry, you didn't choose, so I had to pick for you. So tonight is going to be shower. Next time, uh, next time you can choose again. And so again, that falls into that steps of responsibility. Give them a task they can handle. Can they make a choice? Yes. If they don't make the choice, they blew it. How sad the choice is, I make the choice for you. That's step three. Tomorrow we're going to have the choice again. It's time to get clean. I don't care how you get clean. It can be the bath. It can be the shower. You decide. Again, that's choice. Never give choices without consequences you're, you're willing to live with. That's the other one. Also, don't uh, disguise your choices as threats. Are you going to clean your room or am I going to beat you? You decide. Okay? Uh, that's, that's a threat disguised as a choice. Um, we talked about different types of parents. We had, we had the helicopter parent who never let their who who really stole opportunities from their children because they never let their child make a mistake and we think about as as robbing our child we wouldn't want to steal from our child that's what helicopter parents do they they hover they hover right over their parent their kids and they never let them make a mistake or they take the consequences of the mistake and then there's the drill sergeant and the drill sergeant just flat out tells their kids what to do they're robbing them of of um of learning and and of making mistakes in the fact that um, they never have the opportunity to because I'm just going to tell you what to do and I'm going to tell you every time and so you don't even need to make decisions I'll make all your decisions for you but then there's the consultant and the consultant is, is the love and logic parent the consultant is the person that comes in gives advice gets paid and leaves now as parents we probably don't get paid but we come in and we do our job as a parent I'm a consultant. I have a responsibility as, my, as a parent to guide my kids through tough situations. It's my kids' responsibility whether they decide uh, to take that, take that advice or not. And we talk about how we give advice. There, there are, are five steps to solving a problem, and the first one is empathy. So when a kid comes to you with a problem, you say, Wow, that's really sad. Mom, Dad, nobody likes me. Oh, that's that's really sad. You may I, I can see that you sound lonely. There's that empathy again. That puts us on the side of the good guy. If they say, "Well, nobody likes me," and you say, "Well, yes, they do," or "Don't be silly. Everybody likes you." Well, that that negates their feelings. We recognize their feelings, and and maybe it's not true at all. Maybe nobody does like your kid. I don't know. I know some of your kids, but most of you have pretty good kids, and uh, and and something like that wouldn't be true. And so when they say, nobody likes me, that's their problem, though. That's not our problem to fix. Do they want us to call up some friends and some kids and force them to be friends with them? Sometimes some helicopter parent would do that. So we would sit there and say, how sad. You, you, you sound lonely. What are you going to do about it? That's the power message. We send them a power message. What are you going to do about it? How are you going to handle it? 
They're probably going to say, I don't know. And so then we bring in the choices. Would you like to hear what other kids have tried? This is where the consultant comes in. You know what I would do? We don't say that. Because do you know what they're going to do? Huh. They're not going to do what you would want them to do, right? Because parents don't know anything. Consultants know everything. Consultants are pulling in advice from everywhere else. So parents don't know anything. But as a consultant, you know everything. Because you would say, would you like to hear what other kids have tried? In our kids' world, other kids are the experts. Parents are stupid. Other kids are the experts. And would you like to hear what other kids have tried? Okay. And so you start giving choices. And then step four is you say, how do you think that would work out? Have them think through the consequences. Well, some kids decide not to have any friends and, um, and just stay in their room and read. How do you think that would work? Ah. Uh, I don't really think I don't really think I'd like that. Well, some kids may uh, go to their neighbors and invite them to come over and play in their backyard. How do you think that would work? Well, I don't really like Billy. He's, he's sometimes tough. I don't know that he'd come play with me anyway. I don't know if that'll work or not. Well, you know, some kids would uh, invite some kids home and work out with their parents and their parents to have a to have a play date or to go eat uh, at some other place again after social distancing is over. But, but how do you think that would work? Well, I don't, I don't know. And so you give them three, four, five options as a consultant. And then step five, you give them permission to solve it. Well, let me know what you want to try. There you go. And so that'll work. That'll work for, for anything. And so we as a parent are, are doing our job as a parent. But we're, we're doing it as a consultant. And we're giving them the best possible advice. We're, we're allowing them to think about the outcomes of these things. You might even throw in bad things, you know, like, like sit in your room all alone. Well, we don't want our kid to do that. Um, but we might let them decide to do that. And so, boom, they'll, they'll go, no, I don't, I don't like that. I don't think that's a good idea. So then we say, good luck, and, and let me know how it works out. Boy, as a consultant, step away. There we go. We spent some time talking about thinking words versus fighting words. We, we, we talk about what we can control, our enforceable statement. Here is, what, here is what I'm going to do. I charge to listen to arguments. I have breakfast on the table from this time to this time. After that, you're on your own. Okay, I charge extra for arguing. I leave, I'm leaving the driveway at this time. Or are you going to be there with your clothes on your back or in a bag? What is it you're going to do? Okay. I give kids dessert who protect their teeth by, by brushing them every night. Okay. So what are the things that you're going to do? It's really hard to try to force and control our child. Those are fighting words. We don't want to get into a fight with our kid. Because once you've gotten in a fight with a child, you've probably lost. Um... So what are the things you're going to do? And again, that's taking care of yourself and that's showing that, uh, that you take care of yourself. That's, that's good modeling for your kids as well. Um, and then finally, we, 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 we talked about consequences. We talked about the concept of empathy. Empathy is all the way through love and logic. And, and that's it, because it's so important. That, that soaks up the emotion that's in their brain. When bad things happen, our brain goes into a fight or flight response, all right? And if we want them to learn the lesson, we've got to soak up all of that emotion that's around the area, the thinking part of our brain. Empathy does that, and so that allows that, that lesson, which will come with the consequence, to get into the brain and let them think about it and let them learn from it, okay? And when we talk about consequences, we talk about logical consequences. And this was just a couple of weeks ago. And so this is kind of some, some newer stuff. But what would happen to an adult in the real world? Again, we're trying to prepare them for the real world to be responsible adults. Sometimes, um, sometimes our, 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 our consequence that we come up with doesn't necessarily um, apply to... To a real world situation. And so you want to think about what would happen to me as an adult if I did something that was irresponsible like that. I mean, if I left my stuff out on the lawn, what's going to happen to it? It's probably going to disappear. 
Just like if they leave their stuff out in our public spaces in our house, what's going to happen to it? Maybe it'll disappear. Instead of, um, you know, sending them to the room. There's, there's a disconnect there. So think about those things. What would happen to an adult in the real world? Also, how can I tie the time and place um, with the infraction of the infraction to the consequence? You know, when I had to talk with your teacher for 30 minutes because of your misbehavior in class, that really burned my energy. I'm not now, I am now not able to take you the place that you want to go um, because I don't have the energy to do it. That's really sad. Okay, so, so when we talk about that energy burn in that specific situation, we tie it back to, here was the problem. Your behavior in class has now made a problem for me, so I've got to turn around and make it a problem for you, all right? If, if, if the child's problem is creating something for me, we need to quickly turn it around to them. Energy drain is, is a great one for that. Um, and then also, how can I describe the consequence so it moves the child into a thinking state? And again, we say, when I had to burn my energy on dealing with your bad behavior, that took a lot out of me. So I'm not able to do this. You know what? This is really sad. You came in from, from curfew late. Um, so, and, and, and I was really worried. And so, until I don't have to worry about you coming in late, maybe you just need to stay here um, in the evenings. That's essentially grounding them right but it's tying it to your worry and it's tying them to what what they just did and what's great about not putting a timetable on it you're grounded for one week you're grounded from two weeks from going out with your friends it's why don't you not go out until i don't have to worry about you coming home on time um and then it's open-ended and and you can make it three days if you think it's okay or you can make it four weeks Whenever you don't have to worry about it. Um, so, let me let me talk about a couple of other things, uh, and then we'll end. Um, one person talked about and, and asked about, and, and this was on a Facebook thing, and maybe it wasn't even with the class, but I think I shared with them anyway because it was on my mind. But it was the concept of chores versus allowance, and I know we've talked about this a little bit. Um, Love and logic suggests that all kids have chores. I mean, that, that as early as possible, you start in on them with chores. And you don't pay for chores. Because the chores are a part of being in our household. Okay? You as an adult, you have, you have chores. There are certain things you have to do to make the house run. And so there are certain things our kids have to do to make our house run. So I'm going to get to allowances in a minute. But how do we work with our kids to teach them chores? All right, and here's what love and logic teaches, and this is what, especially when they're young, okay? Chores together. You and me, and we have fun, all right? You and me, and we have fun. I did this with, with both of my boys and taking out the trash, okay? Because I hate taking out the trash, let me just tell you. <laughs> but we made it fun, all right? And it, and, and it started when they were little kids, and I was like, oh, this trash can's so heavy, this trash bag's so heavy, I really need your help. And, of course, they'd come along and they'd, they'd grab the corner of it. And, and then all of a sudden it was a whole lot easier to lift. And so we would walk out to the trash can with me carrying the bulk of the trash and them holding on to the little corner, both Reese and Riker and their, and their young ages, right? And so we would, we would do that and, and, and they would help. And I would, oh, oh, come on, this is really heavy. we got to do that. Oh, into the trash can. Oh, yeah. Ooh, give me five, buddy. That was awesome. I really appreciate you helping me with that trash can. I don't know that I could have done it without you. And it's week after week after week. And as they grow, you know, maybe they're able to take a Walmart sack size. And they're able to dig that. And we, we, we make baskets into the trash can with it. And we do things like that. And so it's me, the ch you, and the chore. And, and fun. And we're having fun. And, and so that's great. Me, you, the chore, and we're having fun. As they get older, and as they're able to do it on their own, all of a sudden, me moves out of the equation. And guess what we're left with? You 
the chore, and it's fun. All right, and they're going to remember that. And even as even as uh, an older kid, they may start going, "Oh, this trash is heavy," or they may start doing baskets with the trash, or whatever it whatever it is. Uh, whether it's, you know, standing at the sink and we're rinsing the dishes. Ooh, we, we're going to get these germs or we're going to knock them into the sink. Can you hear the germs screaming? And then we turn on the disposal and we let them all yell and scream as the disposal cuts up all the germs. Those are some fun things, right? And then we put, the, put them in the dishwasher. Okay, so what it, whatever it is. And so we have fun with the kids. And so make chores when the kids are young, fun with you. Because... They'll have fond memories of that. And then eventually you can pull out. All right. And it's not, it's really not so you can sit there and kick up your feet. You've got plenty to do. You've got lots of things to do. So how great is it when, when they're able to, to do those chores on their own? Another thing that Love and Logic suggests is, is especially as your kid, if your kid is growing up, they're in high school and they're responsible. If, if they're responsible, you might even be able to lighten those chores. Because if they're doing their homework and they're doing everything that they, they need to do and they're a pretty good kid, just just let the chores go. Because they're doing what they need to do. They're, that's their job now is, uh, is school. Um, but sometimes you may still need chores to let people know, hey, this is this is part of the family. Um, you know, my, my two older ones have grown up and have gone to college. I mean, when Reese, when because Presley had her jobs, Reese's job was the trash. Oh, man, it was awful when he left. I tell you what, when he went to college, I had to do the trash. Um, and it took about three more years before Riker was finally able to do the trash, mostly on his own. I still have to pull it out of the can and tie it up in inside cans. But he's able to... He's able to roll those carts around, and he's able to put it in there, and pretty soon he'll be able to do the other one. And then I've only got like six years of trash with him. And guess who's back to doing trash again? Me. So even if I am putting myself, putting my feet up, guess what? I got years and years of trash ahead of me. All right? So that's, that's chores. Now let's talk about allowance, because... Because Love and Logic doesn't, doesn't recommend giving allowance for chores. Again, chores are part of the house. Love and Logic recommends just giving allowance. Children do not earn allowance. They're just given an allowance. Um, uh, provide the allowance at the same time every week. Um, and then also um, never insist that the child save the allowance. That's another thing. Um, let them blow it. We are teaching money management at an earlier stage. And rule four, as long as they're not engaged in illegal activity, allow the child to spend, save, or waste the money any way they see fit. They're going to learn those things. If you go way back to, to one of the first stories we heard on the video, we had a little kid who spent four weeks worth of allowance on, uh, on a plane that broke, like a little toy plane that broke, um, before the end of the afternoon was over. He learned a lesson by, by using his money unwisely. Now, you can still consult as, as, as a parent um, so that they're not wasting their money, but if they decide to waste their money even after you've consulted, you know, go ahead and let them do it. So that's the differences between chores and allowance. Um, I do want to share with you, and I think I've talked about this book. Um, this is Parenting with Love and Logic. And uh, you can find that at the library. You can buy it on Kindle. You can, uh, you can buy it on Amazon if you want to have the actual book. Um, the first half of the book really talks about all of the things that we've, we've shared and the basic premise of Love and Logic. The last half of the book talks about some of these things like bedtime and like allowances and like discipline, like what to do if you're, you're part of a divorced household. Um, how to deal with fears and monsters, what to, uh, what to do when, when kids pitch a fit, how to deal with pacifiers, how to take care of sports, temper tantrums. All of those things are addressed at the end of this book, and so they're, they're really good. I also suggested for some of our parents of younger kids, uh, Painless Parenting for the Preschool Years. It's a, there's a book and there's also a video, and uh, it kind of takes these principles and just applies them to young kids. Um, we're going to end there. I'm going to pick up next time, and we're going to we're going to talk about discipline in public, uh, the concept of a strategic training session, 
And then um, I'm going to give you some final thoughts. Uh, I think I'm going to bring some Bible in. Um, we are a church, and there is some Bible basics, really, behind some of the things that we're talking about here uh, with Love and Logic. Share this with your friends. Um, I, I, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're having a great time with your kids during this time of of, of, of craziness. I know, I know it's crazy. It's uncertain. Um, and, and I just hope you, uh, you continue to, to do well. So, uh, we'll pick up and we'll, we'll give at least one more lesson next week and, um, stay safe and, uh, and stay sane. Bye.